In today's video, we're checking out one of the most affordable full-frame autofocus lenses for the Sony E-mount. This is the 7 Artisans 50mm f1.8 prime lens. This video will cover the video and photographic performance of this lens for budget filmmaking and photographic purposes. This is the first autofocus lens that 7 Artisans has produced and it's also very affordable coming in at only $239. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, my name's Shane. First up, let's state that this lens is a bit of a mixed bag. While it can produce some really stunning images, I'm not a fan of the build quality whatsoever. I've previously reviewed the 7 Artisans Vision Series cine lenses up here, and I love those. This is very different from their cine range in many ways, and I'll cover that in this video. I'm also going to talk about how this lens compares against other lens options and where I think you'd be better off spending your money if this isn't for you. Before we get into it, a huge thank you to Seven Artisans for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. They're not sponsoring this video and all thoughts about this are my own. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this might be the most affordable 50mm prime lens you can find for the E-mount with autofocus and it can produce some really nice images but there are a lot of immediate issues with this lens from a build quality perspective, kind of lets it down. But given the price and features, it might be a good first prime lens for those on a serious budget. When I first took this out of the box, I was immediately surprised by a number of different things. First up, this lens is quite large and it comes in at 421 grams or 914 ounces. Secondly, the build quality is mostly metal, which is nice. Now the front filter thread is 62 millimeters, so if you want to use filters, you can do that, and we get 11 glass elements in nine groups. Sadly though, that's where about the positives end in terms of build quality. This focus ring is by far the stiffest focus ring I've ever used, and turning it is almost impossible, unless you really push it quite hard. I see this as a deal break for anyone who wants to do any type of manual focus work. While we get a dedicated aperture ring over here, it also suffers from the same problem. It's just far too tight when it comes to its tension. When it comes to the aperture ring, it won't move accidentally, which could be considered a good thing, but to my touch, I just find this way too tight. Lastly, the autofocus manual focus switch on the side is so loose that I think it moved positions a few times just moving the camera around. If you breathe on it, it's likely to switch positions, which isn't great. Now, of course, that might be an exaggeration, but you basically can move this without even trying. It would have been great to have this a little bit more recessed in the actual barrel of the lens. If you plan on shooting in autofocus mode predominantly, which is why you'll be buying this, get a piece of tape and lock this off just so it doesn't move accidentally. The amount of times it changed positions handling the camera or handling the lens and not thinking about it, it just drove me crazy. So every time you take this out of the bag, it's going to switch positions as well. So just keep that in mind, get a piece of tape, you should be in business. There were two other minor issues I had with this lens when I first started using it. The first is when you power up your camera with this lens attached, you heard this mechanical buzzing sound. Now, since installing the firmware upgrade, this has gone away and it just sounds like every other lens now when you click power on your camera, which is awesome. So the firmware thankfully fixed that, which is awesome. Secondly, I was unable to find the firmware update anywhere on the 7 Artisans website. There was no option for it anywhere. I checked the product specification page, any other external options on that website, and I couldn't find it. So they did email me that. So just to let you know, it's a little bit on the tricky side to find. Hopefully they can fix up their website to make it more obvious in the future. Now this last complaint is just in relation to the lens mount. So if I mount this to the Sony a7S III or any other camera in my collection, have a look at this. If I use the focus ring, there's some play in the mount and yeah, it's actually quite loose in there. It's fine, it works, but yeah, I don't have any other lenses where I turn the aperture ring or the focus ring and it makes that clicking sound. So there's definitely some play in this particular lens. It's not the camera body. I've got plenty of other lenses and none of them do this. Let's talk about how this lens compares up against a few of the other 50 millimeter lenses I've got. So when we take a look at the Viltrox 50 millimeter F1.8, it's smaller, it's lighter, the focus and aperture rings both feel better on that particular lens. They're not perfect, but they still feel better than this one, but it is a few hundred dollars more. So I think if you're gonna be shooting video in mostly autofocus mode, and you're looking for a 50 millimeter prime and you're on a budget, this is still a really great choice. Now, 
all of these critiques about the build quality don't necessarily take into account the optical quality. I actually really like the results out of this lens when it comes to the image it produces, especially for shooting video. I don't think the autofocus is as sticky on this lens as the Viltrox or my Sony 55mm f1.8 Zeiss lens, but it's still very good. And after the firmware update, I was able to get better results than the initial firmware. When it comes to face and eye tracking for video paired with the Sony FX3 that I'm shooting this video with or the A7S III, it does a great job. The video pulls is smooth and it's quite responsive if the speed and sensitivity are both set to plus four. If you're buying this lens for video, autofocus should do a good job in most situations. Talking headshots will be fine and the overall look of this lens is very nice. There's no weird color casting, vignetting or major artifacts that put me off using this for video work. Autofocus for photography is a bit of a mixed bag. Given that I've got a Sony FX3 and A7S III and not a photocentric camera, your results might vary, but for static subjects, it performed well, but not always perfect. I found the autofocus would pulse back and forth before it found an eye when shooting with eye detection enabled. Burst mode photography was also far less reliable than other lenses in my collection. It did an okay job at a distance, but fell apart as the subject got larger in the frame. Sharpness is pretty solid across the board for both photos and video purposes, so no problems there. This lens has a really vintage look to the image, which means it suffers from some chromatic aberration, flaring, and the usual inconsistencies of less expensive lenses, but the look of it is great. Background blur and bokeh is pretty nice overall. Now, while I'm not much of a pixel peeper, I am happy with the fall off on the background blur quality, as you can see from this example. For most people getting started, this lens will give you some nice results. Thanks to the fast f1.8 aperture, it really makes it easy to blur the background out and make your subject pop from the background. There's a bit of ghosting in some of the images, but not all, and I noticed this mostly takes place in the background of the images while it maintains the sharpness of your subject. Again, this isn't really a huge issue unless you're looking for it. Minimum focus is limited to 50 centimeters or 0.5 centimeters, which isn't what I would call excellent by any stretch of the imagination, but it's five centimeters closer than the Viltrox alternative. While I am a fan of budget gear, I have a hard time recommending this lens to anyone outside of beginners looking for your first lens. If you already own a first party or Viltrox lens, for example, this is gonna be a downgrade in most measurable ways. But then again, it's less expensive. For the price, it's okay at best, but you'll be living with compromises that would put me off buying it personally. At the end of the day, this is a really great step forward for Seven Artisan, who up until this point were making only manual focus lenses. This is definitely not on the same build quality standard as their Vision series, so that's in a whole different realm, but I think a beginner will get some use out of this. If you're starting a YouTube channel on a budget and you wanna get that premium 50 millimeter look, this will definitely give it to you, but yeah, the build quality and overall experience isn't anywhere near a lot of the other lenses I've had my hands on, but overall, it's still a solid performer. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you found this video helpful, let me know what you think of this lens or review or both down in the comment section. If you want to watch another video, you can click this one on screen right now, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.